I want to get to some breaking news right now. We know President-elect Trump uh, did talk with Russian President Vladimir Putin by telephone, pledging to improve U.S. relations with the Kremlin. With me now, one man considered to become the next Secretary of State, John Bolton, former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. and a Fox News contributor, and that's a job you'd have to give up if you were tapped. Uh, sir, good morning to you. More on that in a moment about your own future. But uh, we're seeing a statement from Putin and Trump talking about extremely unsatisfactory relations between the U.S. and Russia. You saw all that and you thought what, sir? Well, I think uh, relations are very unsatisfactory, uh, largely due to the behavior of Russia and the naivete and uh, incompetence of the Obama administration. I mean, I think we all remember that Hillary Clinton started out her tenure as Secretary of State with the famous reset button, blaming what were then bad relationships uh, between Washington and Moscow on the Bush administration. And it turned out that making one concession after another to Putin didn't make relations any better. Uh, look, what fundamentally uh, dictates international affairs is the, the clash and the confluence of national interest. And that's what leaders have to sort out. It's not a question of personal relationships. They're important, that's for sure. But it's rock-bottom national interests that make the difference. How does Trump deal with Putin differently from Obama, then? Well, I think uh, one of the reasons that Putin uh, is... Uh, very casual about uh, expanding Russian influence, taking advantage of, uh, of America in Eastern Europe and the Middle East is that he sees quite correctly Barack Obama as an exceedingly weak leader. Uh, I think uh, Trump is going to be the opposite. I think he's going to be a strong leader and I think that will have uh, two dramatic impacts on Putin. Number one, it'll make him a lot more hesitant uh, to try and extend Russian influence, and two, what may seem paradoxical, but which I think is true, it'll make Putin more inclined to cooperate because he'll believe that if he uh, makes a deal with, a, with another strong leader, uh, they both will stick to it. No. Oh. We'll see if it goes that way. Doesn't seem like it's been that way for some time. Uh, and when About you look, eight years, to eight, be precise. Yeah, right on. Well, when you look at what's happening in Syria today, Russian airstrikes carried out against the, the Syrian opposition. Um, that's the Syrian opposition that it was in all likelihood funded and supported by the United States government. Um, so w what's the window of that opportunity on behalf of Russia? I is that two months? Is, th is that the 20th of January where they see a 60-day window now? Well, I think that, uh, that Russia will take a lot of actions before the 20th of January, as I think will other countries that see one last opportunity to exploit uh, Obama's weakness. But in, in connection with the conflict in Syria and Iraq, uh, I think the point Trump made throughout the campaign, which is central, is his determination to seek the rapid destruction of ISIS, as opposed to the slow roll Obama approach. But look, this is a multi-sided conflict, and the destruction of any one combatant will necessarily uh, advantage all the others. The way Obama's approaching it will advantage Iran more than anyone else. I think that's a mistake. I think we ought to uh, pick the route to destroy ISIS that minimizes the advantage to Iran, using the Arabs more, using the Kurds more, uh, figuring out a way to get the Turks involved more. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that would end up with a more positive outcome because if it's only. not simply yeah. Yeah, it's not simply the destruction of ISIS, although that's the first objective. It's what comes after that. Word from the Kremlin just moments ago by way of Reuters, they will not meet in person prior to the inauguration. So that's steep January, probably February before and when that happens. Now, as for your fate in your future, Mr. Ambassador, uh, would you want to be the U.S. Secretary of State? Let's start there. Well, you know, I'm kind of old school on this business. Uh, it's been an honor to serve the country. I've said, uh, I'll say it again, it would be an honor to serve the country again, but ultimately this is the president-elect's decision. I don't think it's appropriate to talk about it in public. In God's good time, he'll make up his mind and then we'll all move on. I get it. Have you talked to him about it, sir? I have not. Then we await. John Bolton, thank you for your time. We're on standby, as they say. 19 minutes past the hour, sir. Thanks. Martha. So the